now back to green. So what is going on? I don't, yeah, I don't, this is pretty wild actually. What do you think, Frankie? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's definitely some crazy price action. Now we've been watching, uh, we've been watching the levels of about 18, 825. That's kind of the main level that I am looking to decisively break, uh, you know, with maybe four hour candles, uh, you know, a few four hour candles closed below that level. I am expecting much lower prices. But like you said, you know, we lost that level and uh, we even had a spider line on my that we were looking at on my chart right underneath. Uh, we broke that, came down, and now we are getting a strong bounce, which is very similar to what we've seen in the past when we've lost that key level of 18,825. We kind of lose the level, get saved by the spider line. It's only short term and we bounce right back above it, which does look like that is what's shaping up here. Um, but well, let me ask you this. Let me kind of put you both on the spot a little bit. I mean, we're not obviously you can't predict the future. You don't know 100 percent which way it's going to go. But we got the obviously the data came out today. CPI numbers. Everybody still seems to be leaning towards the Fed being remaining hawkish based on or they have at least the ammunition they need to say why they're remaining hawkish. Do you think, you know, we've seen the dip, we've, you know, kind of bounced off this a little bit. We might play around these levels between now and the next Fed meeting, or do you think it's going to remain volatile for the next week or two kind of, but is it going to be more sideways between now and the next Fed meeting, or do you think I expect a lot more volatility over the next two weeks before the Fed meeting? Uh, start with you, Tom. Yeah, if, if we go just by what the Fed's supposed to do and what you know they say and what they're looking at, there's no reason to expect upside on really anything except for dollars and bonds, maybe. Mm -hmm. I do want to just show this quick. Holy crap. Uh, so if we think about this as kind of a story, we've had a bunch of days of bleeding off of you know this little high we had at like 21,000. Uh, this wick today is actually really wild and definitely goes against kind of what I'd be looking at fed wise. Hmm. We just tapped, you know, we just tapped under 18.1. That was the low in September 21st, just underneath it. And if you think about it from like maybe a narrative kind of narrative sense, this is a liquidity grab. Uh, we could definitely see a bounce here that could have strength, especially if Bitcoin closes this daily candle here, or even a little higher would be better. Like we could see a pretty volatile bounce. I think we're all really comfortable in this sideways price action and nothing happening day over day and it's just like bitcoin fashion to throw us kind of a curveball when we get comfortable yep yeah I, I, absolutely you know uh i was actually looking at book map yesterday which is something we're going to cover a little bit more on my channel um trying to figure out where the orders are on the actual uh order book and there was a lot at about you know between 18 2 and eighteen thousand even um so i would agree you know uh it Raul Powell, uh, you guys know if you watched uh, ATB in the past couple of days, we were talking about his indicator and uh, how it was pointing for uh, a big move to the upside to come. But he did warn for some volatility today, saying that we might get those CPI numbers, see a little bit of a dump before recovering and coming back up. And uh, I'll, I'll say this. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw uh, some sideways movement. However, again, we've been looking at those higher daily time frames, looking like they are setting up with having momentum, moving to the upside. Upside. So if this this dump is not sustained and we can get back above those key levels, uh, I do think we we may be able to potentially continue higher because those higher time frames are not completely invalidated yet. However, there are some uh, bear signals popping up on market cipher B that I will show in a little bit. Um, but yeah, you know, momentum is generally coming up on those higher time frames. We've been looking at that for a while. So maybe this is just a little bit of short term volatility before getting uh, a continued move to the upside. Frankie, have you seen uh, Market Cipher A on the weekly? Yes. Someone that... I pointed this out today while I was streaming. Someone said something and I like ended up on the weekly. Yep. I just want to show this. This is pretty wild. Uh, three yellow X's. There it is. I don't think we've ever seen yellow X's on the weekly time frame for Market Cipher. Uh, nope. This is definitely not free money just because we have X's here, but this is telling me we have a big move coming. Uh, mm -hmm. Something is is definitely. Wow. I mean, that's you know, not a super valuable statement, but like this has never been seen before. And I'm kind of excited to see how this plays out. Yeah, I, I would 100% agree. That's kind of what I'm talking about. I, you know, looking at market cipher B, the momentum waves are definitely setting up here. Um, oh, there we go. We have my chart up. Uh, so we have these big momentum waves to the downside, and then we have a higher low on the next wave here. Typically, this is basically indicating that momentum could be moving to the upside. However, uh, we've been looking at on my channel uh, a lot of these time frames. And again, you wake up today, uh, you know, 
we had the green dots printing, and which looked pretty good, right? We were having the momentum coming to the upside. Price was making lower lows. Could have gotten a big move to the upside. But one thing we were watching on my channel was the yellow VWAP coming above that zero line and just flipping back over. I just want to zoom in to show you guys this because uh, you can see that yellow wave came up and just rolled right back to the downside. And every day I wake up, you know, yesterday it was the four day started to print a red dot, kind of invalidating this bullishness. Then this morning, the five day is now printing a red dot. The four day uh, is now printing a red dot. Just every day, the higher time frames, although they do look bullish, they continue to roll over. And speaking about those yellow X's, Tom, uh, there is also one on the five day. Uh, I believe the five day now has one. The four day now has one. And uh, I believe the two day now has one. Okay, two day, uh, two day disappeared. But uh, the popping up on the five day as well and the weekly, um, Definitely a very, very bearish signal. So uh, I, I'm, I'm excited as well to see where this brings us. Uh, the only thing that I, I, the only real caveat I see there is typically the first two yellow X's will give you a big move to the downside. And then, you know, sometimes that third one will give you a move. But a lot of times that third, fourth, and sometimes even fifth yellow X can indicate seller exhaustion, uh, which is interesting. But definitely not a good sign to be seeing those yellow X's pop up, especially, uh, you know, that. You know, those higher daily time frames was what I was leaning on to hopefully uh, hold on to and see not get invalidated. And those yellow X's are definitely looking to invalidate that uh, that bullish setup there. So is, is there anything else that you're looking at, Tom? Or, uh, you know, if, if you had to lean, I mean, this I, this harder than any time in the market uh, to lean bearish or bullish because it's just been sideways action. Uh, so I'm just getting bullish at support, bearish at resistance, trading the short term time frames. Uh, how, how are you kind of playing it? That That's all we have right now. I think that's the yeah. smart play. Um, basically, where my mind's at is you look at the macro and there's really no reason to get bullish on anything until the Fed cools off. I, that's like the logical, easy answer. Um, but even today, you know, I was watching the Dixie, the dollar, and it, on the CPI print, we saw a really large hourly candle print out, and then it's just retraced. And now mm -hmm. the dollar's in a red day. And so that doesn't really line up with kind of what we would expect and what we've seen. You know, this could all reverse by the end of the day and everything mm -hmm. look clean and kind of neat again. Um, but I, maybe I've taken my lashings in the last year and I don't want to fight the Fed. I'm waiting for some yep. kind of rhetoric, but maybe that's what everyone's waiting for. And so like, right. therefore, it's like by the time it happens, it's too late. I, I'm always bullish on Bitcoin, you know? It yeah. doesn't have to go up tomorrow, but I just remain bullish long term. We're, we're just going to see how this plays out, I guess. Well, and yeah. that's where I think accumulating is always a great strategy and mm -hmm. not making a move. You know, it kills us sometimes to sit on our hands. But like you were just saying, sometimes waiting and watching is is a move. Mm -hmm. you know? So keeping that well, in mind. Absolutely. Tom, I, I heard you say one day when I had you on my channel, uh, you, you know, you said 99 percent of the time, you know, when we're in times like this in the middle of a bear market, uh, you know, you know, 99 percent of the time, the best trade is to be to be in is no trade. Uh, and you know, so, sometimes, you know, sometimes that is true, especially if you're longer term trading, like I said, me, I'm just kind of scalping those shorter term timeframes. Uh, you can get those movements on a, you know, on a sideways day. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a bear market. If you guys are learning how to trade right now or learning TA right now, I mean, this is the thick of it. This is the, uh, you know, this is as hard as it's going to get if you're learning how to trade right now. So once the bull market comes, uh, you're going to feel much more like a genius than you do right now. Cause it's a lot easier to trade in a, in a bull market, uh, than a bear market, because there's a lot more sketchy price action it goes sideways more um but yeah don't forget to check out tom's channel guys uh thank you so much for coming on tom we really appreciate it man uh link Anytime. in the description down below tom has an amazing uh youtube channel makes great content uh and i highly recommend you check out his uh his fed meeting streams they're my absolute favorite <laughs> uh but yeah thank you thank you so much for coming on tom we really appreciate it man good to see you guys what's up tj all right later Frankie, dude. we'll talk you. again soon later take it easy brother Amazing. I love Tom, man. Yeah. Tom, Tom is the man. I love having him on my show. Uh, and yeah, he he talked about some really good stuff there. It's really interesting to see, like, you know, you wake up to that big dump and now you look at the Dixie and the Dixie's got a one hour blood diamond. It's absolutely pouring um, as we get this Bitcoin bounce. Uh, so this is finally we get Bitcoin to do something. And it's just, uh, you know, uh, I was telling TJ, I'm like, finally, we're getting a dump. Something's happening. This is amazing. And as we're about to go live, it's bouncing right back to where it was. Yeah.
Uh, so it's like it, Bitcoin does not want Frankie Candles to have anything to talk about on the stream. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. It times it out perfectly every time. Uh, but I do just want to show you guys a couple quick things, uh, a couple quick things on the chart here, uh, because there are some levels that I'm watching. So uh, it's essentially right now, guys, we are obviously getting that bounce. Now, uh, I brought this up on the morning stream before. Every time we lose this key level, that value area low of 18825, the reason I say I'm watching for it to get decisively broken is because a lot of times we have broken this level many times, but it's never been sustained, right? So we come, we get a breakdown here. We get bounced right back into the value area. We get a breakdown here, bounce back in, bounce back in, and you guys can uh, basically, you know, see where this is going. So are we going to see the same thing kind of happen here? Was this just a little wick out? And are we going to bounce back into that value area? If we get a bounce back into this value area and we can, by some miracle, get all those yellow X's to disappear, because you want to remember those yellow X's on the higher time frames are printing. It's the five-day yellow X. It's just printing. It is not confirmed. Uh, there it is in all of its glory. Let me just fix this chart real quick. There we go. Um, if that, if we can get that to disappear and we can get the weekly third yellow X, uh, I can't believe we're seeing a third yellow X on the weekly. That's mm. insane. Um, but if we can get all that to disappear and we can get back into this value area and those higher time frames can remain bullish, I think we could get some relief. Uh, but it's going to really depend on whether I was hoping to get uh, more of a decisive move out of this, uh, out yeah. of these CPI numbers and just decisively break this level finally, or uh, you know, actually get a, a you know some good news and get a move to the upside. But you know, if things are not going to get better. Uh, with the economy in a more macro sense, then, uh, you know, the interesting thing is, are we going to see Bitcoin hold up as the tank, as the, as the tanks start to stock, as the stocks continue to tank? Oh, wow. Because, uh, you know, we yeah, see- It might work both ways these days. Talking about yeah. Yeah. yeah, good point. Yeah. Very good point. Uh, but, you know, uh, are, are we going to see Bitcoin continue to hold up? Because it has held up in the recent past pretty well. This is been a pretty bulletproof uh, level of support. And today it's just proven that again with that big wick down and then a straight bounce back up. Uh, but what I'm looking at for potential for a potential further move to the upside, guys, uh, is if we look through these time frames just a little bit, uh, is it the two hour potentially looking to print a bullish divergence? If we can get this money flow to curve back up and confirm a green dot here, it could put in a bullish divergence as we are sitting right on that spider line. And that could give us a potential move to the upside. And the levels I would be watching for a move to the upside is that main level is going to be about 19, uh, 19, one between 19,150 and 19,200 uh, or 250 would be that next level. We do have, uh, you could see this gold box. Likely if we do get a bounce, we will get a little rejection there. And then hopefully we can get a continued move to the upside uh, and not just continue sideways for months to come because that would be absolutely boring, but to be expected in a bear market. Uh, also, Checking out the SPY here again, uh, you know, losing this key level of support. This is the two hour chart, losing it just slightly before getting a nice bounce back above it. Uh, so not, you know, uh, it's decent that we are holding support here. Uh, and then that Dixie, there is the Dixie uh, two hour blood diamond there just bleeding completely. But we are hitting up against support. Uh Let's see. <laughs> Tom has a radio, uh, a radio star voice and a movie star face. Yeah. Love those shades too. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen Tom without his shades. Uh, I'm sure he's got those movie star eyes. Oh, Shout yeah. out to Tom he definitely Crown. Has he's got the, the baby blues. He's got the baby. Of course, he's got the baby blues. Yeah. Oh God, Tom Crown. Shout out to Tom Crown. Uh, but guys, that's what I am looking at on the charts. Again, hoping those yellow X's that are very, very bearish signals to disappear as we continue to get this bounce. They're not confirmed just yet. So hopefully we can get a big move up, uh, invalidate those uh, X's. And then that will, give us, uh, that will give us some potential to move to the upside. We also... Uh, have a daily bullish divergence. I'm not going to dive into it just because I, I want to save time. But uh, on the daily, we are potentially, uh, like this is the Dixie, uh, but on the daily for Bitcoin, we could potentially be putting in uh, another bullish divergence, which again, uh, would be confirming, uh, you know, printing here pretty soon. So that's another thing to watch for a potential move to the upside. Uh, and don't forget, guys, uh, KuCoin introducing zero trading fees on Ethereum and Bitcoin pairs. It's for the next seven days. Uh, I do believe, I think it ends on the 19th. Um, so uh, pretty good. We love KuCoin. I absolutely love KuCoin. Uh, and if you if you love KuCoin too, and you like over the over 600 altcoins that they offer, make sure to smash that like button and uh, smash the like button if you guys love Tom Crown as yeah. well.
Uh, so with that being said, guys, I think that's all the time I got for it this morning. If you guys want to dive deeper in, I think I'm going to go do a pre-recorded market update to dive a little deeper into the charts. Uh, and don't forget to catch me live at 545 Eastern Standard Time right after this guy. Uh, that's all I got. Back to DZ. Bing bong. Thank you, thank you. With my good hand. He's always got oh, me with gosh. the good hand. Hey, now. Hey, uh, yeah, to say, that sounds like a party. We love, we love Tom. Tom is really good at the shorts. Yeah. You know, I, I can't wait to see his channel go to new heights. Oh, boy. You know, he's he's an honest guy. He doesn't really tell those like tall tales. No, he doesn't. You know, uh, we love Tom. We love Tom. Uh, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. But, you know, I actually want to say, can we just give a shout out to Crypto Face? Because I'm looking at all these buttons and these X's and these little VWAPs and, and all these things. He really does put out a good product. And I was sitting over there and I had a. Bitboy.com uh, reviews, mm -hmm. and we have reviews. So I'm like staring at the Marcus Cipher review, and then you guys are talking about it, just utilizing all the features. Uh, big, just big shout out to CryptoFace. Uh, he did put out a good product for the crypto industry. Yeah. I think you know we he didn't get enough love for that. Uh, his personality is so strong, it overshadows his product, but uh, in a good way. In yeah. a good way. All right, let's talk about uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's his favorite coin. He's so bullish on Bitcoin. Uh, you know, CryptoFace. He can't accumulate enough Bitcoin. Bitcoin and Ethereum continue tumble following hot inflation numbers as follows the stock market again following the consumer price index. And they continue to dip after it was released here. Uh, we can see, you know, it's, I mean, when you look at the chart right there for Ethereum and now, like, you know, we have said it is bouncing back. But, man, that was quite drastic for that seven day chart. The CPI report showed that the prices of goods, spoiler alert, have increased from a year earlier. Yep. This time, eight point two percent. What? Do you, any thoughts on that? Um, I mean, some of the numbers I saw. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a surprise. Obviously, with something we've been, you know, if you're following the money supply, you know, you talk about it. It's been coming for a long time. We know these numbers are going to continue up. I think S. You said eight point two estimated was right around eight point one, eight point two. So yep. they're not. They're coming in about what the economists were saying they were going to be. But I mean, some of the if you remove the you know the core numbers and you start drilling into some of the specific ones i think the cost i saw a number that said the cost of uh making your own food at home is up 13 percent over the year you know it's like things yeah. like that, that uh, really pepsi during their quarterly report i believe it was quarterly report 17 or 19 percent increase year over year costs right uh, for, and then that's a very giant those who don't know about pepsi they make more than just soft drinks so that's a lot of uh, moving parts for them to come up with that number. So it's a, it's a broad spectrum, a lot of data points. Uh, Some are saying Tom is six foot eight, 37 eight, uh, inch vertical leap. I also already used the 1993, 1994 uh, blockbuster video game champion there. Oh, so. I believe that 100%. <laughs> All right. 100%. Uh, back to uh, the story here. When the equities take a hit, Bitcoin and the rest of the market tend to follow as investors tend to look for safe havens like the US dollar and avoid risky assets. And of course, just as this happened, the DXY, we do have it maybe possibly curving down and we are now just getting a bounce. Hopefully this bounce is a little more sustained, but we need something to happen for Frankie and his channel. It can't just go sideways every day. Right. He's up here dancing, guys, it's sideways. I'm trying, but you know what? He's making those scalps yeah. and he never did answer. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the people were wondering, is the short open? Is the short closed? Are you obviously you're heavily in profit? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, the short, you guys will remember yesterday, I was talking about how I was trying to hedge myself, waiting to enter into a long position and moving my stop loss on my short into profit. Uh, never got my long, uh, my long position. You didn't schlong. But I did not schlong, unfortunately, but I was still in that short. My short is still open and it is paying out big time. Let's go. Shout out to DC. All Let's right. go. Big bong. All right, well, uh, now it's time for the Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, no, we're not talking <laughs> about RZA and Jizza. We're talking about Willie Wu and uh, the Wu gang. Woo! All the people like to listen to uh, his data points. He does have a lot of good stuff. All right, so he is saying in three years, 12% of the population will be using Bitcoin. That's mm. roughly one out of eight people. Before we get into the story, TJ, what do you think of that just broad assessment Three years, one in eight people using Bitcoin. Now, he said Bitcoin specifically, not yeah. crypto. Uh, that's where he loses me. That's a lot. You know, that seems like a high number. One in eight. You know, when you say, which is, what did you say, 18%? 12%. 12%. When you say 12%, it doesn't sound that high. When you say one in eight people, it sounds pretty high. It does sound pretty high. Because, uh, I mean, you think of one in eight people. It's, the way I like to think of a broad band of uh, humanity is the DMV. I think that's kind of the best selection. Sometimes the post office as well, but that, that ends up skewing the data. Everyone has to go to the DMV for the most part if you're a productive member of society or if you want to drive around. So you go to the DMV, you get a good snapshot. And when I think of the DMV, 
one out of eight people using Bitcoin is a little bit tough because there's 40 people in there. I'm thinking I'm the only one. That's just uh, I guess. Yeah, I guess the the difference is going to be how it hits developing nations. So I like I could Mm. hear like one in eight Mm. in, you know, first world economies. Like I could probably believe that in a few years. But I have my hard time wrapping around like all of you know these developing nations. That's because that's where a lot of the population is. One in eight people using it there. Yep. But if it takes off in developing nations and does have that grassroots movement, I could see it happening. But I'd put it I'd put it more like five or six years, you know, before we see, you know, like two more cycles, maybe even before we see, you know, those kind of numbers. But you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I think of Asia, you know, I could definitely see the I don't know, say three years. Let's just say roughly India will have about one point two billion people. I'm not a geopolitical expert. This is kind of a guess here. One point two billion. That's going to be a lot of people that are yeah. going to be using Bitcoin in India. But then you think of China, which is going to be closer to 1.4 billion people, even higher population. I don't think the CCP wants people using Bitcoin. I think they're going to want them to use their digital currency. And so one out of eight using Bitcoin, I don't know. One out of eight using crypto, I think that is entirely possible and uh, maybe even before three years. All right. And uh, as chat saying, you know, he's somewhat known as a maxi. He's a well-known pioneer of on-chain analysis and is a Bitcoin evangelist. His Twitter profile is tracked by over a million and uh, they receive regular updates on Bitcoin network crypto. So, yeah, he's always up there posting pretty good uh, information about Bitcoin. And then this is kind of talking about adoption curves. And this uh, articulates how new technologies get developed and then popularized in broad communities. This is just showing some different technologies, uh, electricity, air travel, HDTV, social media, smartphone, Internet. And you can see like just that rate of adoption. A lot of things over, uh, you know, right that 100% over this 90%. This is, this one's dipping down. I like to see, maybe that is, there's no way that's air travel. Yeah, we have to, oh, TV. Hmm. TV's on the decline. Because mobile, I mean, just like, did you see digital cameras blew up and then came back down because of, you know, everybody's got a cell phone now. So Yeah, I mean, think of, uh, yeah, we're speaking of emerging markets. I mean, back in the day to receive news reports or just kind of know about your you know country or what's going around in the area yeah you wouldn't need a tv but now it's definitely going to be smartphones so yeah. wow interesting tvs on the way out uh just like the thumbs up emoji yeah you know, you, <laughs> you know, thumbs up you give me this you get no i'm just kidding hey i, I still use the thumbs up emoji you know why not you know what? I, I went back and it was like uh, the 10 most emojis used by boomers. And I'm like, I use a lot of these. Mm-hmm. Hey, now, hey, this is a personal attack now. Are, boomer, are boomers getting tech savvy or are we turning into boomers? That is the question. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. According to some analysts, they have already completed the periods of innovation and early adopters. Right now, Bitcoin is entering the early majority phase, which will be the up to 34 uh, percent. Here we can see, right, you are here. You are here. And then there's the late majority. And then there's the laggard. That's going to be, you know, that that last person to get the smartphone. We know who it is. We're not going to say anything. Uh, but, yeah, the early adopters, <laughs> that's uh, the Bitcoin pizza guy. He's right here. You yeah. think he's rich, but no, unfortunately, he sold way too cheap. Now, I'm sure that guy's doing okay these days. All right, the widespread adoption. I don't think he's at Papa John's anymore. <laughs> of the Internet began in the 90s. While the adoption of cryptos continued from 2014 to the present floor uh, or the present lower X axis, if this growth is maintained, we can expect 1 billion users by 2526. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to see. Now, the problem, I'm going to poke a hole in his thesis and don't get mad at me, Bitcoin maxis. But if you go back in this chart, 2016, what's the percentage of people using uh, crypto versus Bitcoin? It's a, That Venn diagram is dang near a circle, right? Everybody involved with crypto here have basically used some Bitcoin. There's going to be some people who, yeah, I don't know why I'm looking at 92 on top. Oh, yeah. Some people, yeah, I've only done ETH, but I've never done Bitcoin. That would be a very small minority. When we get to this area, I think it's going to be a high percentage of people who've, yeah, I dabble in cryptocurrency all the time, every single day. I love it. I eat it. I sleep it. I breathe it. And then you say, how many Bitcoin transactions have you done? They're going to say zero. Mm-hmm. So I think that number is going to grow and grow. Yeah, it is. I would say, though, the impor- it is important you know, that we are tracking along with growth similar to the Internet. I would yeah. be careful when they're using these numbers as far as like number of people and population. Each unique Bitcoin address we know is not does not represent one person at this point. Like We know we've discussed this on the channel before many people or individual users have multiple addresses and yep. so when you say a billion addresses that's not a billion people it's just something 100 like percent there uh yeah you see some of these things mp3 player yeah that's going to disappear tablets as phones get better tablets will be used less uh microwave 
hmm, that's a good brain teaser. I don't know what microwave is going to do adoption wise. I feel like people don't like it more and more. Um, I actually don't own one. Probably I have zero plans of owning one. Yeah, are you an air fryer guy? I am. Yeah. See, once you get an air fryer and you start using them, it, I mean, it's like, well, do I really need a microwave? So I got an air fryer oven combo. Right. Um. So yeah, it's it's it, it takes a little bit longer to heat up, but yeah, it works it works very well. I have a uh, 70k in crypto, zero Bitcoin. Yeah, that's going to be a, a more common story as uh, we move forward. All right. Speaking of Bitcoin, though, the price to benefit from record high open interest as year-to-date volatility mm, weakens. Uh, recent data collected across a variety of metrics saying the price bottom is in sight and the market may be on the cusp of a sharp turnaround. Was that what just happened? I mean, I don't know. And it appears that the institutional traders have already begun to make their moves. Open interest for perpetual futures on Binance recently reached all-time highest Bitcoin-denominated value. That is pretty bullish there. Uh, we keep scrolling. The volatility also flattening, usually at its highest close to the peak, but tends to reduce towards the end of a bear market. And if uh, data is to be taken into consideration, the end of the bear market may be in sight. I am starting to feel like that a little bit more. As uh, per Bitcoin options uh, implied volatility data, says traders have predicted decreased short-term and long-term volatility from September onwards. So a lot of smart people are saying the end is maybe in sight. We're not saying, you know, we guarantee it's happening. But, no, but it would align with the timeline we've been calling for this whole time about the bottom being near the midterm election. So we're within a couple, you know, basically we're getting within that 30 to 45 day window range where the bottom should be in any day and any one move. I'm still holding out that we're going to see it not long after the next Fed meeting, but that would keep us perfectly in line with when we see the Bitcoin bottom cycle wise traditionally over the timeline. Yeah. Uh, someone said, so basically just an oven with the fan. Yeah. 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 We yeah. Fell for Pretty the much. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is. You know, I remember at first I thought it was like a pressure cooker. Yeah. And it's going to be like condensing all these like hot air molecules, like pressing yeah. it. I did a taco impression there. Pressing it into your food. And then uh, when I lived at the hit house, mm. I lived in a hit house for a while. Uh, <laughs> I was in a cardboard box and it helped me out. I was actually living out my car. Uh, when I saw it, I was like, this isn't airtight. Yeah. This is literally just a little It's like a toaster. mini. It's a mini convection oven. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. I, was, uh, I was, yeah, the bloom was off the rose at that point. I was like, this just, this is just a fancy little toaster. Yeah. But speak real quick, speaking about that mark, those markets, and it's something I wanted to kind of throw in when uh, Tom and Frankie Candles were chatting. I'm, Crypto Don Alt's one of kind of my favorite Twitter accounts. He's very good long term macro trader, has been in Bitcoin for a long time. Uh, and he, you know, he said something that echoes, I think, what a lot of people are feeling, right? He said, my gut feeling for traditional markets is down. However, my gut feeling for crypto markets is up. Crypto mm. is set up to squeeze up. Traditional markets feel set up to squeeze down. And then he said, duck confused, just going to sit on my beans and chill in the pond for a little while. And that's kind of what, you know, Tom and uh, Frank were talking about, that just... You know, if you're getting conflicting messages, wait for confirmation before you make any major moves, for sure. Yeah, I was listening to All In Podcast, and on that note, they're saying these capital allocators that have, you know, sold billions and billions of assets, smart ones still have a lot of money on the sidelines. There's trillions of dollars sitting on the sidelines. And I know the smarter investors, they're, they're definitely more patient than retail, more patient than me, but they are human at the end of the day. And you're going to start feeling FOMO for opportunities here. And if you don't like the stock market, and it's just been such a long time, and this bear market and the stock market's continuing, your palms are going to get at you. You're going to want to do something if you're one of these capital allocators, and I think Bitcoin is an attractive investment. So, yeah, I, I could see a little bit more of a, uh, uh, you know, no more correlation, that, that correlation just shrinking, uh, getting further and further away from one here. All right, let's uh, talk about, speaking of the stock market, uh, I did like how Frank's thing, uh, stock tanks or tanks being stock, it, it kind of worked either way. So that, that was a... Uh, Actually, it was a happy accident like me. All right. Dow futures dropped more than 500 points after a hotter than expected inflation report. It wasn't happy. Futures for the DGAI fell 420 points. Nice. Or 1.44%. S&P 500 and the NASDAQ futures slumped one and three quarters and two and a half, respectively. The yield on the 10-year spiked above 4% as bonds sold off. Yields are inverse to price here. So we have people just, they're looking for something else, you know? And so uh, the 10 year, uh, they're looking a little more attractive. Got to get out of the stocks, get out of those stocks. But that's when the, the Warren Buffetts are buying, you know? That's when the, the Elons and the, the Bill Gates, they're pouring more money back and they're doing stock buybacks. Yeah, Elon sold a bunch at the top in November. Bill Gates sold a bunch of top uh, in November. 
Berkshire Hathaway selling that whole run up, and now they're going to be, maybe they're going to start buying. I know I would if I was them, because they DCA in it's years. It's years. They're not like me, where it's like, I'm careful with my language here, where I uh, finish, uh, where where I, I just, I, 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 I use it all at once, you uh, know, in one chain link order. Uh, right. So they, they, they're not like me. They're not like me here. All right. Investors also digested minutes from the September Fed Reserve meeting released Wednesday. The minutes showed that the central bank expected to keep hiking rates until it sees receding inflation. But one comment made uh, people think that the Fed might slow the rates, if not roll them back, if financial markets tumult continues here. So we do uh, we have a scary situation with traditional markets. We have a scary situation in the stock market. And these bankers, uh, they, they know what's happening here. And there's a lot of macro data saying it's bad out there. DZ looks like he drives a Mustang. TJ <laughs> looks like he drives a Lexus sedan. Uh, well, there is someone who drives a Lexus sedan as far me. as on-camera talent. Yeah. Sh- should you say it? Yeah, it's Brian. It's not me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brian, Brian. You, you got the four-door sedan, but it's Brian. It's I, Brian. I drive a, a GTR and a 4Runner. He drive, you have a truck and a, and a Chrysler 300. Right? Yeah, and we do have a Mustang driver. We do have. It's an we, editor. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah. think of an editor being the Mustang driver, but yeah, yeah it's an editor. So, you know, John, John. Actually, a former roommate of mine. We were hit house companions. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, we, I, forgot we both, he did that. I saw him like two minutes a week. Uh, <laughs> he was, he was uh, just, you know, just he's doing his own thing. I like John. He was the, the greatest roommate ever. Yeah. All right. Yellen worries over loss of adequate liquidity in the treasuries here. This is actually Uh-oh. pretty troublesome. Uh, she cited concerns about a potential for a breakdown in trading of U.S. treasuries as her department leads an effort to shore up that crucial market. Yellen noted that the Fed Reserve has now a standing repurchase facility to provide a liquidity backstop to the market. That can be helpful, she said. She also said that this so-called Group of 30 panel has presented some good ideas on reforms that would help strengthen the market, including possible expansion of central clearing. This is just uh, them not allowing the free market to do what the free market's going to do. This is them trying to create a soft landing. But some are saying, you know, this is going to have the the opposite effect of what they want. This is just going to make it's drawing out the landing, so we're going to go even lower than if we just would have had a, a rip the Band-Aid moment. You know, a lot of people are saying we should have just ripped the Band-Aid many, many moons ago. Now it's a little too late, but hopefully uh, let's see if they can do well with this soft landing. But you've seen them change their language over and over with when it comes to soft landing. So it, it, there still might be pain moving forward, but I am still optimistic that I do think crypto markets will uh, beat the stock market in the coming years here. All right, Elizabeth Warren is demanding data on Texas crypto mining. Mm. She wants data on the electric grid stability, emissions, and subsidies. Now, is she going to use this information to further educate herself on the market, uh, further educate herself on uh, emissions uh, when it comes to gas flaring, and further, you know, talk about how Bitcoin mining can help uh, these oil refineries? Let's find out, chat. All right. Democrat demands data in a letter and seven other government members uh, demands financial and operational information about mining in Texas. The letter estimates that Texas is responsible for one quarter of all U.S. Bitcoin mining. Large miners are currently using two gigawatts of energy, enough to power all the residences in the city of Houston twice over. It warns that Bitcoin mining could produce additional demand of five or six gigawatts in the next 12 to 15 months. They're trying to uh, use... they're, They're using careful language here to manipulate you here and i, I want to point this out this is enough power to power all the residences in the city of houston twice over houston is a houston shipping channel is a large industrial town so that's not enough to power houston twice over it's enough to power the homes and i would bet the vast majority of energy for that city having been a resident there half my life a lot of the power is going to industry so they're trying to frame it. It's enough to power Houston twice over. That's not the real data there. That's not the real data. I would like to know what the real data is. It's probably 20% of the energy there. In July of 21, she began to criticize Bitcoin's energy usage. This year, she's urged at least two agencies to regulate mining more aggressively. She just loves big banks. I, mean, I, I really hate that's what it probably is. Uh, before I got really into crypto, I, I kind of thought she was like a champion for a lot of people's rights. And, you know, Baytown, I actually did go to Bay, I, Baytown. Hey, Kyle, what's up? Horace Mann Middle School, what's up? Uh, yeah, Goose Creek. Um, yeah, I, I used to think that, man, she's such a champion for the people. And then as I had just learned more and more about the finance market, she's she's a champion for bankers. And 
she's really done a good job at branding herself. Um, champion for bankers and champion for her bank account. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I would say that's a, almost like a common theme amongst these uh, congressional members. That yeah, it is. They do champion their own bank account. It's and, amazing uh, how that works. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like when you give people power, they create laws to keep themselves in power. Hmm, I don't know. That's wild. That's a weird thought experiment. That can't yeah. be true, right? All right. A quarter of SEC employees stock invested in firms lobbying the SEC. This is wait what I had no we I literally didn't know that the headline was going to say this and yet we we're talking about congressional members yeah uh, corruption involving stocks and look at what's happening here uh, here is Gary Gensler seen uh, smiling as a not even gonna say it mm. all right greater than twenty five percent of the workers on the SEC have invested in shares of companies that lobby w uh, with them here greater than five dozen officers at five businesses together with the uh, the Fed Commerce Fee and Justice Division reported buying and selling inventory in corporations shortly earlier than their departments introduce enforcement actions. That is corruption, black and white. There's no going around this. This is our government uh, basically not working for the people. This is not a representative majority. This is a oligarchy. This is theft. This is the powers that be trampling on the people. This is, I am the snake being tread upon when I see that. Mm. It's, it's not good. It's not good at all. SEC, nonetheless, is actually certainly one of them with it unclear whether or not Wall Street Journal will now make public these invaluable reviews in order uh, that they're often analyzed extra broadly. Well, I don't know what's going on there, but it does look that we need more uh, data on these people. This is just corruption, uh, pure and simple. And I don't think corruption of this level has anywhere. Uh, it shouldn't have anything to do with our governments that's responsible for regulating these financial institutions. Exactly. And it's just. It's just, it can't be more clear how corrupt this is. It's like we're in some sort of banana republic, not America. This isn't, this isn't my America. All right. Did you say banana republic? Yeah. yeah we're like shopping at the mall? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like a gap. Yeah. You know? It's like an American <laughs> what's eagle. What's going on these days? Yeah, I, I don't know what's going wax, on. It's know. like an American eagle here. Uh, speaking of American eagle, what's up with Ye? Did you see that JP I, Morgan yeah. took his banking? I saw Fun it. fact for the Bit Squad here. Here's a fun fact. J.P. Morgan banked with Jeffrey Epstein. J.P. Morgan banked with Jeffrey Epstein five years after he was convicted for using a child for prostitution. They continued to bank with him for five years after conviction of child prostitution. But then they unbanked yay. Just, uh, just a little food for thought there of, uh, you know, just how hypocritical that whole situation was. Yeah. It's only, mm. it, it's to me, one's worse than the other. I don't know. Yeah. Call me crazy. I think Jeffrey Epstein's worse than Kanye. Well, I know I'm a maniac, yeah. right? One's a convicted crime. Another one, you just don't like what he said on Twitter. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. Anyways, here. All right. Samsung uses blockchain-based security for devices in its network. Uh, tech giant announced it will utilize blockchain tech to upgrade security protocols for all of its smart devices. Thanks to our smart buddy, Seth. Uh, it's kind of educated me. Samsung has long been on the forefront when it comes to crypto technology, mm -hmm. when it comes to Web3 technology, when it comes to blockchain technology. And Samsung is just continuing to uh, go down that path. It almost makes me more bullish on buying one of their phones. I don't, it, I don't know if I've ever had a Samsung phone I, since maybe flip phone days. I actually was a Samsung user for a long time. I used the Galaxy. Shout out to the, the Galaxy S8 Active. Best phone ever made. They, they had to stop making it because it was so durable and it worked so well. But... I remember early on, I don't know if it was 20, I think it was sometime in 2018, it could have been 2019, but Samsung was one of the first major manufacturers that every Galaxy came out with a wallet, a crypto wallet pre-installed yeah. on it. And so, yeah, they've been very heavily invested in blockchain for a while. I know we pulled up some charts uh, that show all the major companies and their investment. In, yeah, in, yeah, I remember and that. Samsung's always top of the list. So I'm not, this doesn't surprise me. Flip phone, yeah, I'm old. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah I had a Razor. Everybody okay. had a Razor. Come I, on. Had a, I had a pager. Oh, I'm wow. not kidding. Wow. I actually I didn't have a page. Never had a page. I mean, I'm I'm dang near 40 years old, you know. I, I mean, I basically was using rotary phones, right? <laughs> I had cans with twine that we use wax, you know. Wow. That's that's what I had to use. All right. Uh blog post from Block Data on the 16th revealed that the company to be the most active investor in blockchain since September 21. According to the post, uh, they participate in 13 funding rounds. So yeah, as of uh since September 21, over the past 12 years, they are the most active investor. So I think that might be based off uh the amount of ventures or funding rounds they're doing rather than uh, just a dollar amount. I think flat dollar amount might be Google. But yeah, Samsung just hanging out with the big boys there on the top, making big investments in the infrastructure, going to further the industry. Samsung's a huge player. So as Samsung starts adopting more and more blockchain technology, 
this is a good Trojan horse. You know, the phone in the pocket. This yep. is how you're going to get the family members at Thanksgiving to buy that crypto that you're trying to shill them. No, no, no. You need to buy it. You need to buy it. Hopefully it goes better than it did in 21 when we were telling our family members to buy. I actually said don't buy, mm -hmm. uh, to be clear. I said don't buy at these levels. You know, it will go as low as 28, I think, is what I said at the time. Wow. Yeah, you should get in, like, if it goes below 30. Uh, I was saying, like, a sweet summer child. But on there are going to be, I think, this Thanksgiving would be a good Thanksgiving to maybe recommend that uh, you have a family member look into it. And if they can just go... Oh, beep, boop, beep. I have some crypto. That's a lot easier than I got to download what? Mm -hmm. I got I to gotta write something down. If I lose it, my funds are gone forever. I'm freaked out and I don't even want to do it anymore. Exactly. That's what's going to happen a lot of the time. Well, and that's something I've talked about a lot. You need the Googles, the Apples. I mean, Samsung Pay, you know, Google Pay, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay. That's how a lot of digital payments were happening right now. And blockchain just helps them facilitate that so much more efficiently. So, and then like you just said, once that happens, it's immediately in the pocket of billions of people. And maybe that's how we get to that 12% number we were talking about earlier in the show. Something like that. Yeah. People saying a uh, Palm Pilot. Remember the little PDA assistance <laughs> yeah. you get at Radio Shack? You my were one of those kids. I had one. Yeah. Did you have one My too? cousin had one. My uncle had one with the, you know, the first time they ever invented the stylus or whatever. And you thought you were so cool. Oh, hold on. Let me pop Yeah. You put your little phone book in yeah. it. God, we used to have to write down phone numbers before cell phones. Yeah. Uh, DZ, I'll page you when I need it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, hilarious. that's why DZ had a page. Yeah. <laughs> I was running things in 10th yeah. grade. All right. 44% of the top 100 public companies use blockchain amid growing institutional adoption. Indeed, this is huge. 44 out of the top 100 public companies by market cap across six major sectors are currently actively utilizing blockchain in some form. Giant. That is giant, 44 out of the top 100. These are some of the smartest people in the world, and they have uh, teams working on this stuff. So 44 How is Samsung out of the top on that list? After all that talk, we, Samsung should be right in the middle of those tech ones. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, what's, what's going on here? Y'all uh, y'all hating on our, our buddy us. Samsung. You know, they must have one of those phones that blew up in their pocket. Yeah, They're exactly. still mad about it. Yeah, they don't, they don't like that folding phone. All right, uh, most of these active institutional uses of blockchain and crypto are located in the U.S., 12 are in China and Hong Kong, a uh, special administrative region. Many others have filed applications for NFT and metaverse-related trademarks in the U.S., adding to more than 6,000 NFT and blockchain-related trademarks in the U.S. filed since the beginning of this year. 6,000 trademarks. Huge numbers there. All right, Konami plots NFT, Web3, and metaverse hiring spree, mm. which is huge because this is going against the grain in the tech sector. Right now, tech's they're doing layoffs. They're freezing hiring, but not right here with Konami and blockchain. They're most famous for uh, outside of Japan as a video game developer and publisher. They're currently recruiting a wide range of talent for system construction and service development to provide new experiences such as Web3 and Metaverse. This is them being careful to not say NFT to piss off the gamers. Yeah. But this is 100% them building out an NFT marketplace for a video game. They previously tested the NFT waters in January when it sold a collection of NFTs via OpenSea. They earned more than 160 k at the time. And some media outlets such as Kotaku lambasted the effort in line with many other video game industry pundits and critics. Yeah, that was very disheartening when reading the headlines. Whatever happened to... Uh, I forget what was that parent company they sued. Uh, they got sued by Hulk Hogan. They just fell off the deep end. Jezebel was yeah. the, the thing, but mm -hmm. I, I forget what the parent company was. I used to really like that publication, and then they basically just kind of push agendas. Yep. Um, it was like, you know, we know what we feel about this topic before we write it, so we're gonna have a headline like Konami drops the ball and pisses off gamers, and they're, they're they'll cite like two tweets, like yeah, look at this guy and this other guy's piss. They've clearly lost touch. They don't know what they're doing. This is gonna fail. It's because they just don't like NFTs. It's because they don't like crypto. It's because they have an agenda they're trying to push. Yeah. They have an agenda. I'm not saying they're trying to make me eat crickets, but the more I'm in this space, it's like, what, what, what is your agenda here? Like, why are you pushing these weird narratives that you want to remove ownership from people? I don't know. Anyways, the major fortunes of the metaverse will be made in land. Mark Twain advised, buy land. They're not making it anymore, except for Dubai. What Twain never imagined was that in a little over 100 years, we'd find a way around that minor inconvenience. Welcome to the digital world, every new land. New lands minted every day. Uh, identity is a central component. I think it is going to be a huge component uh, in the Web3 metaverse space. Once we can prove who we are across the metaverse without having to reveal who we are, we can start to engage with a multitude of projects in good faith. This is uh, leads into the synonymous um, 
predictions that a lot of people are making that we are going to move to a more synonymous economy. Satoshi Nakamoto is probably the, the best example of what does synonymous means. You are anonymous, but you have some sort of profile. Mm -hmm. It's just not your profile. Versus anonymous, you don't know who it is, what they're trying to say they are, or who they're saying they are. Uh, you know, you see the guy with the mask and the mustache saying Scientology were pissed. But, you know, it could be one of 20 different people. They'll do another video. It's a different person. So that that would be more anonymous. Synonymous would be, yeah, you kind of have an uh, identity. Uh, we see it a lot with NFTs. There's a few people. They're not doxxed, uh, like the Board 8 founders. They weren't doxxed at first. That would be an example of a synonymous identity here. We are going to see it more and more. Me, I'm DZ. I've been out there. I was wearing green spandex on Twitch years ago. People know who I am. I gave that up out the gate because uh, in the paper magic world, you win tournaments, they publish your name. Yeah. And so I, I, I've been out, you know, I've, I've been, the cat's been out of the bag of who I am. I mean, you can Google DZ MTG tournament and like, they'll pop up my name next to my deck. They don't say DZ MTG. They, they'll say Nick Valdez. Yeah. Yeah. I just docked myself. All right. <laughs> Daily ETH issuance drops 97% post-merge, significantly cutting emissions. We've known this. After the massive upgrade uh, from proof of work to proof of stake, uh, validating transactions is keeping its promise of greener operations in its daily issuance drops here. And yeah, I mean, th this picture just tells the story. This is merge day. So we had some of the day uh, in this level. But then, yeah, as we move past that, just look at that activity. Now, I will say this on a day like today where a lot of people are making ETH trades. There's definitely some deflationary blocks that have happened in the past 24 hours, my guess. I, I mean, I, I'm not an expert. We'd have to ask Seth. He probably would know, like, the actual number. But I, I'm guessing there were periods where ETH was technically deflationary. It's just it doesn't last long. It's uh, You just get random blocks that do it. In other words, the merge has reduced the overall network's power draw by an impressive 99.95%. So anytime people come at you with energy FUD, it's, it's old data. They're full of crap. DeFi economists at uh, Consensus has suggested that Ethereum post-merge was now the foundation of the internet as it can process more transactions than uh, established platforms like Visa and its quality is placing it in a position for mass adoption. However, no one's going to want to pay a $3 fee to uh, buy you know, a stick of gum. Can you imagine the gas fee if everyone in the world used Ethereum for every transaction? It'd be $500 gas fees. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're, we're still a ways away. So uh, when you see that, oh my God, they're doing more than Visa. Why we're not? Why aren't we using it? Because if we also did Visa's transactions, uh, yeah, it would get uh, it would get scary. Why do you hold your left hand like? <laughs> uh, I actually have a uh, injury that I am trying to recover. So if anyone wondering why it just kind of looks like uh, the hand from was a scary movie too, that's why. <laughs> All right, Cardano community remains defiant after Ada sinks to a 21 month low. Cardano is down and it is down bad. Uh, is sunk to as low as 35 cents during that Bitcoin crash level. Not seen since February 21. Uh, in response to the new lows and possible further uh, drawdowns, community as a whole, voice continued support for the project. Uh, you know what? I'm one of those people. I'll show you what I, this is. This is what I tweeted. Wait, when Cardano is down in price, it means it costs less to sweep a floor? Mm -hmm. Say less. So yeah, I, I'm just kind of, you know, leaning into a, you know, we just, uh, we just cry. I mean, yeah. we just we just try to laugh off the tears here. All right, uh, CEO, <laughs> not the Cardano CEO. Calm down. IOG CEO Charles Hudson called on concerned investors just zoom out and look at the bigger picture. 100%. If there's real use case and utility and a real purpose in five years, ten years, fifteen years, things are going to look better. I agree. What are your thoughts on uh, Charles yeah. uh, trying to talk people off the ledge? There? Yeah, he's always a good guy. I agree 100. percent I mean, we're these are the opportunity times. So prices are down. These are good times to accumulate, in my opinion. And yeah, when you zoom out and you look at the price over time for the entire market, even as down as it is, uh, you know, times on our side is what I always say. DZ practicing the claw. I don't know if that's like an anime reference or <laughs> a, a mandible claw reference for mankind from WWF. Uh, years and years ago, if that was a man, if that was a mankind reference, kudos to you. If it was anime, I'll let it slide since I watched my first anime. I don't count Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid. I watched my first anime. People, uh, I, I hated on animes forever. Mr. Beast was on a podcast. He said you should watch Death Note. It's thirty six episodes. It disappeared off Netflix. It disappears tomorrow. I watched it. It was pretty good. All right, someone, someone in the background, they liked it too. All right, let's get into XRP, XRP community. Where you at? Hit that like button if you're watching. XRP versus SEC. Ripple Partner makes next big step after officially joining Case. 
last few weeks have been eventful for Ripple, both uh, regarding their business and litigation with the SEC. Only yesterday it became known that the trial judge allowed Ripple's partners to present their opinion in court. We covered that yesterday. And today's Filipino I remit has officially sent an extended amicus brief here. So good news. Uh, they have signed his first contracts for ODL Solutions in France and Sweden. And Lemonway, a French provider of payment for solutions, and uh, Xabot, I don't know how to say that, which carries cross-border transfers between Sweden and Thailand, became new partners of the crypto company. With the latter company, they also shares uh, many projects fo focus on the Asian remittance market. So they just seem to be making more and more strides in the remittance markets. Can Ripple be deemed a success if its use case is primarily it's just a remittance provider? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's what they're they're aiming for. I mean, it is going to be a mostly a interbank system. So I think that yeah, that would be a success by Ripple's book. Okay, mankind, of course. All right, two points for B equals yeah. All right, uh, last uh, story here: How Ripple boasters its foothold in Europe. New partnerships announced. Uh, Ripple announced a partnership with uh, Lemonway. Yes, yeah, just kind of going over that. It's a France-based customer uh, that will leverage the RippleNet's on-demand liquidity solution. That was the ODL that we we're providing. Uh, researching talking about research titled uh, crypto trend and business and beyond conducted by the payment company claims that demand for their products is high if you're in the ripple army you think demand's high hit that like button right now because we see it we see it at the conferences we see it uh when we go out uh speaking of these events we see it at definitely the bit squad meetups people love some ripple they love some ripple they love some xrp um and you know i've, I've never shied away from the fact it was my first uh, crypt, uh crypto that i ever bought I opened the app planning to buy Bitcoin. I saw how cheap it was. I was a noob. <laughs> yeah. We were all there. And uh, just real quick, Elon short here. Elon Musk, back to promoting Doge as a payment method for the new cologne. Oh, wow. uh, the cologne is $100 a piece. Uh, I think they say it smells like burnt hair. Um, we should order some. We should order some and uh, make Joel spray it or something. <laughs> but the problem is it doesn't uh, ship until Q1, right? Yeah, it's shipping yeah. Q1 next year. Uh, already listed on eBay between 200 and 1,000. Might be sold out now. I knew it was going to uh, double or triple because uh, the flamethrower did. So I, I just knew it was a easy, easy come up. But I, I opened the website. I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. What am I doing? Am I really going to spend $100 on burnt hair cologne? Really? I, I, I stopped myself. I had a moment of sanity. But yeah. I already feel the FOMO now that I see eBay's going for 200 1000 Dang it. Yeah. Oh, well. I should have bought it. Well, there's bought it. I'll take a flamethrower over some burnt hair smell any day. You know, like I can see why the flamethrower would sell it so fast. And the short shorts, that was kind of funny when they did that. Uh, the people were shorting. Uh, Am I Tesla. hearing we're getting a flamethrower content? <laughs> hey, All right. Hey. You Let's take it to the next BitBoy meetup. And come yeah. after. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. Uh, that is all we got time for. And uh, we'll be back at 5 p.m. Don't you make sure. Stick around. Hit that subscribe if you're not subscribed already. We have an awesome episode of ATB. I was looking at the guests. We're kind of going over some topics. It's going to be a great one. You're not going to want to miss it. And until next time, Bit Squad, it's easy out. Be easy. Thank you.